It's December 20th, 2014. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as nuclearproctologist.org. And just, uh, we're looking at the damage of the Fukushima reactors hemorrhaging into the ocean from three melter reactors. We've never seen a melter reactor on this planet before. There's three in Japan, not counting Unit 4. Unit 4 is just as bad. The coriums that are taken out of the reactors and put in the spent fuel pools are all missing. They've all been atomized in aerosol and the inventories have been lost. And so what that is is disposition right around the entire planet. But the Northern Hemisphere in particular was hammered dramatically with long-lived isotopes and elements and particles that are ionized and radiated and you won't find them create, they're not created by the sun, they're man-made elements. We took normal elements, put them through a chain reaction, made them two million times more dangerous and now we're putting them through the same chain reaction again or two million times again because we took missiles at the silos. Just a quick breakdown for anybody who's not 100% familiar. Enough to get you started anyway. And so the devastation have now has annihilated most of British Columbia's coastline is verified. We've never seen any birds in the last 700 kilometers feeding. We haven't seen any since May, any flocks of birds feeding. That is unimaginable on any ocean, let alone the Pacific Northwest. Now I'm still in Prince Rupert. I get up tomorrow morning. The seas are down to six feet. Uh, by tomorrow afternoon, I'll be crossing. And I'll be in the Charlottes for about 30, 40 days. Uh, and so I'll be probably heading down to Cape St. James pretty quick, down to Queen Charlotte City pretty quick. And then work my way around the islands. It's 360 kilometers down each side. There's splits in the Queen Charlotte where you can get out on the west side or the east side. And so those places got a lot of little spots you can hide and anchor. And there is camboys in some of these places. There is um, hot pools, hot water. Uh, natural spring wa hot water pools and so I'll visit those. Uh, the, the Queen Charlotte's is notorious for being completely loaded with life, particularly in the tidal pools, the nursery of the ocean, which is what we're checking. And I send out a short little video before I take off tomorrow morning just so everybody got an update. The stove was $2,800 in many parts. There's the, you had to get the welders to make up and insert. There's the the fuel tank on the roof, all the fittings and everything else, the lines, it's just an amazing amount of time, energy and effort. And well worth it, it's amazing heat, I couldn't sleep with any shirt on last night, I've never experienced that one on this boat anyway, now since May, certainly since we got the cabin on it, it's been cold weather and we didn't, I didn't have uh, proper heat. You can burn $25 a day, that burns 1.28 gallons in 24 hours. And so it'll pay for itself when the trip is over. Uh, the coastline of Canada is emblematic of the coastlines of the Pacific Rim nations. You can't have one without the other. The jet streams are real. The jet streams travel at 100 miles an hour and the radiation never stopped coming out of Japan. Um, at 100 miles an hour, it's 2,400 miles in 24 hours. The winds blow straight across to North America. It branches down towards California and Canada and circle, circles around Canada many times when it gets over here. So there's a huge disposition. It, everything on the west side of the Rocky Mountains washes down to the Pacific. On the east side goes towards the Atlantic and the Gulf. No elements are so small they won't give you cancer in 5 or 10 years. All the elements that come out of Fukushima are hot particles. A gram of it produces more atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. In other words, a gram is enough to give everything, every mammal, every human on the planet cancer and will. What we've done uh, is we took the inventories of the pool and multiplied it and each reactor, not counting the spent fuel pool full of old reactors, which is no different than a, a chain reaction reactor because they melted down, caught fire, and detonated. Uh, their, their inventories were lost. And so what that means is it's not only hemorrhaging into the ocean, but it hemorrhaged into the atmosphere for eight months into the upper and lower troposphere. And that if it was just a one event, it would take 10 years for it to rain out. It never stopped. And the first eight months up to November of 2011 was a constant, horrific hemorrhaging, both not only into the atmosphere, but uh, constant hemorrhaging into the ocean, which will go till the end of time. And so nothing can live in proximity to it. Everything in the tidal pools is affected and has been affected and annihilated immediately. 
and the salmon, the tuna, the whales, and everything are furred up the food chain. They're being annihilated. This is all within three and a half to four years of the event. And I'll end the video there because I don't have a lot of bandwidth. Uh, I gotta go up, get a taxi up, sit there and drink coffee till this is uploaded. And tomorrow morning I'm gone across. And if not, I'm gonna go hang out in Freeman's Pass, Eddie's Pass, Poacher's Island area, Larson's Harbor, Banks Island. And work my way when the weather breaks I'll shoot across then so I thank everybody for your support and please continue to support me you know when I come ashore this time I haven't been in a hotel room for three weeks I've been living on this boat for three weeks so I need to get a hotel for a few days and you guys have made all the difference the hounds of Fukushima and the Fukushima hounds you folks are amazing absolutely amazing people thank you from the bottom of my heart Zoe is absolutely loving the heat. She just flakes. Just loving it. You should see it. And so I'll get some pictures of that at some point. But it's on. Starting tomorrow morning. Hold your head up, folks. We're going to get the job done. Okay? Hugs.